Good morning, or good day, good evening, whatever it is. Today I want to talk about ice cube relays. This one in particular is an 8-pin relay. And here is what it shows on the back. Now I have blown it up a little bit so you can see if I look on my relay, I've got a 2-7 with a little box like this. That's a 2. That's a 7. This is what Allen Bradley, this is an Allen Bradley relay. This is what they're using for their coil symbol. This is the pinout that you see if you flip it over. Now you've got a little uh, protrusion here on the bottom. It's not completely round. It's not symmetrical and I've got that down so if I go around this way one two three four five six seven eight it's actually in the plastic and I started to highlight them a little bit with a black highlighter hopefully so I can see them but you really can't so if your eyesight's not the best you might have to get under some better light use some magnification or whatever but if you do that on an eight pin socket, typically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, as you go around clockwise, starting at the bottom. This is pretty much a standard when you see them in terms of the layout there. So a lot of these eight pin relays are interchangeable and that's the pin out. Going back to the other side, over here I've got the actual relay contacts. I've got a 1, 4, 3, and 1 to 4 is connected in the off position, and 5 to 8 is connected in the off position, and then uh, they've got the, the 3 and the 5. So I drew them here also so you could see it. That means that 1 to 4 is a normally closed set of contacts, whereas 1 to 3 is a normally open set of contacts. A lot of these relays will do that where you can choose either to use normally close one to four so that when it energizes this opens or you can choose normally open one to three so that when it energizes it closes. So they give you a lot of versatility with these things and of course it's symmetrical. I've got eight, five, and six works the same as one, four, and three. Now it's important to always when you take one of these relays is to look for the coil voltage. In this case it says it's 24 volts DC. It's right here above the two and I wrote it out. Uh, these relays come in many different voltage values. So if you were to take out a 24 volt relay, put in a 110 volt AC relay, it wouldn't work. So I've got DC, DC relays, I've got AC relays, they're all going to look the same. The only thing that matters is somewhere on it, it will tell you what the coil voltage is. So anytime you replace a relay, you've got to make sure you get that right. Because they, there, there are ones out there that are confusing. Those relays actually fit into a base. And this base, as you can see, has a place where it will snap to DIN rail. Uh, that's very handy. You can pop the relay on, pop the relay off, flip it around. Allen Bradley relay, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight going around. So it's sort of the opposite of what you see here. But if you think about it, I'm looking at the relay backwards, so to make it match, I would have to flip this around and plug it in. So my numbers appear to be a mirror image. In fact, they are. One, two, three, four over here. Five, six, seven, eight over there. But when I flip it around, they'll match up perfectly. This is one type of relay base. If you're building a project, you've got to be careful what kind of relay base you get. It's very handy to snap something like this on a den rail. You can take it off. You get a relay base like this, you have no uh, DIN rail options. This relay is set to simply go into an area and just be held in place with the screws. See, you've got your standard eight pins. 
I was actually able to highlight this one with a uh, black marker and you can sort of see I got one, two, um, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight going around. So again, the screws match up with terminal numbers and the terminal numbers match up with the relays. Very important. One of the things that you want to do when you have to check a relay is first of all most relays you can have a visual indicator of whether or not it's moved. You can look through the glass, you can see if the little contact here is moved from one position to another. This one has a light that would come on telling me that it's energized. Sometimes I have a little window here with an indicator. But being in maintenance, eventually relays fail. How do I check them? Well, two things will typically go bad. Typically, either the contacts in here will wear out, they'll arc a little bit from current, and they'll eventually eat away to nothing. In which case, your one to three, for instance, will not ever make a connection. Even though the coil energizes, even though this, this thing in here flips from touching four to touching three, you don't have electrical continuity, you don't have current. So, you can have that kind of situation. A lot of relays can be cheated, doesn't appear this one can be, so I can't physically make the contact here and check my one to three. If I could check my one to three, if I could make it, then I would use my voltmeter. Set to ohms, this is a multimeter. So if I go all the way around to my lowest setting, which happens to be diode, and I check one to three, I should get my open or my OL, which is what I get. If I go one to four, you see that it goes to zero. So I've got continuity one to four, just like the, the drawing shows. Of value for checking a relay is checking the coil. Most of the time on an eight pin relay, your coil is gonna be pin two to pin seven, which in this particular base is gonna be the bottom two outside. And I can check my coil. And what I'm getting here is 0.353. I'm actually on diode, so that's giving me a voltage drop. Based on its DC source. So I went up into an ohms reading. I get an overload. This does not mean my coil is open. It may mean my meter is not on the right range. So I keep working up until I get a reading. And it looks like I've got 0.444 of 2K or 2,000 ohms. So this is a 444 ohm coil. What you're looking for when you check relay continuity or coil continuity is you're looking for some number. If you continue to get the OL and you keep going up all the way to your maximum range, then you will know that your relay is probably open. Your coil is not energizing. It's not making the magnetics happen. So that's a little bit of quick primer for relay that you can go back and look at over and over again. Once you get familiar with the way they're wired up, the way the pin numbers go, where the coil is, and making sure you got the right coil, you're going to be a relay genius. Thank you.